If there was any doubt in your mind about the UFC being a blood sport, it'd be made crimson clear with the tough exchange between Patty and Topuria. What makes their rivalry more than just empty trash talk is that they're serious contenders, having pulled off a win each at UFC 282. Seems it's now time to settle scores and fight it out to become the ultimate winner. Let's see what each fighter thinks of the other's chances in the ring. First off, Topuria isn't betting on a fight happening anytime soon. If there's one reason why the fighters hate each other's guts, it might be the UFC itself. This was proven by Ilya's jab at UFC for protecting Patty, who's the promotion's rising star. It wouldn't be a great look if he was thrown off so early in his rise. That too, by a featherweight. Similarly, losing to Topuria would be the upset of the decade for Patty, who's just recently boarded the hype train of being one of the UFC's biggest and baddest. On the other hand, the Georgian featherweight's done two things here. One, he saved himself from further embarrassment, and he's also teased both UFC and Patty at the same time. That might not get him a fight, but it'll bring him big accolades for being a gutsy featherweight taking on the heavyweight Dana White himself. Plus, star power and the risk of losing it goes for either fighter. It might not be in the interest of the promotion to pitch the two against each other. Also, the limelight is big enough for both, and they don't have to share it with each other in any case, given that both fighters aren't even in the same division. Following up, both fight in different divisions. Yes, Ilya's just proved his featherweight chops, toppling Mitchell to become the number nine of that division. He's got plenty of competition to worry about if he wants to climb that chart all the way to number one. Plus, he's comfortably set in his position, with a dominant one-on-one -on -one performance against former contender Mitchell. The Georgian's technical choke submission in round two looked pretty good, even to Patty the baddie. The baddie, too, has his work cut out for him in the lightweight division. He's got a lot to go, especially after his iffy win over Flash, tallying him up to a four-win streak in the UFC. If he wants to shoot for the big guns, Now's the time to do some lasting damage to the competition and get himself noticed. Fighting a featherweight at this point simply wouldn't make sense for his brand or his long-term career plans. Up next, the UFC's playing favorites. The UFC doesn't hold back when it comes to building up its fighters' brands. We saw something similar when it was McGregor's turn or in the many chances that the UFC gave to John Jones despite his criminal behavior outside the ring. It does make sense since the UFC is an entertainment agency as well. It manages talent and it knows how to take care of them too. One of those ways is to keep them happy while always looking out for the next big thing. For Dana White, Pimblet might just be that. This is even more crucial in the absence of Conor McGregor, who's on a break since suffering all those losses and injuries. Plus, his USADA clearance is still many months away. Meanwhile, Dana's making full use of Patty, who also just happens to be a great stylist and an impressive entertainer on top of being a good fighter. Whether that'll continue depends, of course, on the baddie keeping his winning streak going. For now, he's 4-0 in UFC and 20-3 overall. That's an enviable number, but he's still got a long way to go in the UFC. Perhaps a little nudge by the big boss will speed it up a bit, but it all depends on Patty keeping up his end of the bargain in the ring. What's more, UFC has the final say in deciding matchups. As a promotion, the UFC's been doing great. As a therapy camp for its fighters, though, the promotion company's absolutely abysmal, and that's the way it should be. It's a martial arts agency after all. Sometimes, you'd even feel the UFC actively pushing for a feud between some of its fighters, like Israel and and Jones. So far, no fight has come out of it, but Dana's one to strike when the iron's hot. The fire was certainly hot between Khabib and Connor when they were billed for a fight. The problem, though, is that neither Paddy nor his nemesis Ilya are close to being as big as the Eagle or the Fighting Irish was at the time they got booked. We guess the UFC's biding time for now and counting each fighter's wins. If either gets big enough, we might expect a matchup, but for now, it wouldn't be a strategic win for either the promotion or the fighters. Both rivals will have to prove their rival material, and one step towards that might be by putting each of them up to the test first against other fighters. Not to mention, Paddy's controversial win over Gordon at UFC 282. Yes, it goes without saying that the Scouser and the Georgian aren't the only fighters on the UFC's calendar. The competition always biting at the heels at any given time in the UFC, and it's getting closer and closer to Patty. Recently fighting Gordon, the fight landed the baddie in a bad situation with the fans and the commission. The Scouser's image as a man of the masses took a hit as soon as the unanimous verdict announced him the winner over Gordon. That looked like overkill, and frankly rigged, 
to many fans and UFC fighters themselves. Weighing in on the issue now is the Nevada Athletic Commission, which is investigating Judge Crosby, who officiated the fight. While the outcome of this investigation's anyone's guess, the fallout from the decision, unanimous no less, has already hurt Patty a lot. He might need to glove up and score a big and unambiguous win or two before he'll be back to his former high ground. As for now, he's challenging Ilya from a defensive stance of his own, and we all know how that goes. Or rather, let's hear it from Patty himself in the upcoming segment. The Scouser isn't holding back, though, despite the trouble his unanimous wins gotten him into. The cheeky Irishman known for his witty banter and slick moves isn't letting Ilya's accusations against him land so smoothly. Now, he's countered with a pre-fight analysis of his own, calling out Ilya's short height as a too easy target for himself. Is that a noble concern shown by a champ or a desperate face save? Let's find out. Following up, Paddy's killing two birds with one stone. Both making himself look taller and moral, Paddy's dished what seems to be a mock concern concern for his opponent's short height. He seems to be hinting at something, a couple of things in fact. Both aren't too flattering on Ilya Topuria and might have hurt more than any knockout. This was a particularly low blow by Paddy, and if this doesn't get the fight out of Topuria, it'll make him look weak and Paddy as the ultimate baddie. Paddy's daring move might have also revived the chances of a fight happening between the two. The change in strategy from defensive to offensive also makes perfect sense after the flack Paddy's gotten over his Gordon win. By turning his cannon mouth against the El Matador, the baddie's going for the perfect camouflage. It might end up giving him the space he needs to escape the blunders at UFC 282, and also stay in the limelight until his next fight. The Georgian featherweight's not going to make it as easy as that, though, with Ilya launching attacks on Patty's credibility and bringing up his UFC backing. This not only makes the Scouser look weak, but also ill-willed and dishonest, which may be even worse for someone like Patty, whose image is built on straight talk and good old merit. Up next is the Liverpudlian taking a leaf from the fighting Irish Irish's playbook. There's only ever been one like Conor McGregor in the history of UFC. Sure, he wasn't the best fighter, but his striking was on point, both with his fists and with his razor-sharp wit. The successor to this strategy now seems to be 27-year-old Paddy Pimblett, who's following in the footsteps of his senior. In the same way, Paddy's made some insulting statements about Ilya's home country. If there's one thing that's off-limits in UFC, it's false politeness. Fighters say it like it is, or, if they aren't big on talking, they'll make their feelings pretty clear in the ring. But if it's Paddy the Batty, you can be sure he's earning his nickname. He did just that by taking a dig at the Georgian's hometown sometime back in 2008. That was enough to deploy return fire from Ilya's camp, too. Since then, both have lunged at each other, brawled in a cafeteria, and gone through the rulebook of a McGregor entertainer. Finally, can we expect the ultimate showdown? The shock and hype of a big showdown aren't dying down, but there are technical reasons standing in the way of a potential matchup. It remains to be seen whether the UFC will come down one way or the other, or if the promotion's waiting for a green light from the commission over Paddy's last fight. This matchup would definitely be a great ploy regardless, turning recent negative scrutiny into positive publicity and a potentially easy win for UFC's fancy new fighter, Paddy. We certainly hope competition keeps building inside the ring rather than outside it. The fighters could set a class example on how to resolve matters in the octagon itself. Things are also complicated by the fact that Ilya's no easy target. He might be shorter and lighter, but he's also lethal in his technical abilities. Plus, the featherweight darting about in the octagon's literally not going to be as easy a catch as Paddy might have made him out to be. Still, there's only one way to resolve this matter, in a fight. Better for this to happen earlier rather than later, since the longer this gets dragged out, the more Topuria's attacks on UFC and Paddy's alliance seem to hurt the brand credibility of both the promotion and the fighter. An honest, exciting, and no-holds-barred match to decide the winner might be the best way to clear their name for both UFC and Paddy. Either way, names are surely getting made for good or torn down for bad in this potential battle across divisions. That's it for this video, folks. Who would you bet on in a possible fight between Ilya and Patty? Do let us know in the comments below. If you liked the video, remember to press the like button. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.